Welcome back, Devils fans. It is your host, Ace, here on Running With The Devils, where we are talking New Jersey Devils hockey all year long. Please hit that subscribe button, smash the like, share with a friend. Thank you very much. And today, the New Jersey Devils finally put out their promotional theme night giveaway calendar. I look forward to this every year. As many of you know, I am a Devils hoarder, collector of all sorts of memorabilia. I love the theme nights. I love the bobbleheads, the giveaways. Whatever you got, give me it, please. And while the announcement was rather lackluster with not a lot of excitement and giveaways, aside from a Jacob Markstrom bobblehead on the last game of the season, the most exciting tidbit to come out of this release for me is the Ring of Honor. Oh, yes, my friends, the Ring of Honor. It's finally happening again. We saw Sergey Breland inducted into the Ring of Honor last year after the Devils kind of had this project on the back burner for six or seven years. They finally revived it last year with Sergey Breland, and we're getting another one this year. And for those of you that have been watching Old Ace on this channel for a little bit of time now, you guys all know I love nothing more than reminiscing about the glory years, and I think there is no shortage of guys that should be put into the Ring of Honor eventually. Hopefully they start to do it a little more frequently. There will be a new inductee into the Ring of Honor on January 22nd, 2005, when the New Jersey Devils host the Boston Bruins. And the question is, the big question, who is going to be honored? Who is going to be the next guy into the ring? The first one inducted years ago was Dr. John McMullen, the Devils' original owner. Rest in peace, John McMullen. Legendary figure in Devils history, obviously brought the team here, fought hard to keep us from relocating. While we still have a hockey team in New Jersey, he was the first inductee. Sergey Breland, the only three-time Stanley Cup champion whose number is not in the rafters. A very deserving honor for Sarge last year. And this year, we're going to put in a third guy. So in no particular order, I'm going to talk about the guys that I personally believe are the most fitting to go into the ring. And I'm curious when they're going to announce this. I hope it's sooner than later. And maybe there's a chance that they don't even know who it is yet. I mean, that's always a possibility, too. But... I will go with my list in no particular order. Obviously, everyone knows none of this is even a thing without the architect, the man himself, Lou Lamarillo. Obviously, Lou Lamarillo is more than deserving of the Ring of Honor. Devil's longtime GM from 1987 to 2015, a 28-year stint that saw countless division titles, playoff runs, and obviously three Stanley Cups in 1995, 2000, and 2003. So without a doubt to me, Lou Lamorello 100% belongs in the Ring of Honor, and he obviously will be there one day. The question is, is he going to be this inductee now, or will he be inducted in the future? I do think the fact that he's the GM of the Islanders right now might put a little damper on that. A lot of times teams do these types of things when a guy's working for another team. Um, I don't necessarily agree with it, and I don't think it really makes sense. Like, who cares that he's the GM of another team right now? He, he brought us three cups and was our GM for nearly 30 years. But either way, Lou definitely belongs in the ring of honor. And if they're waiting for him to not be working for another team anymore, I mean, that day may never come. I do believe that Lou Lamorello's death and retirement will be one in the same event. And what I mean by that is, if you haven't figured it out, I think Lou is going to be working in hockey till the day he dies. I really believe that. And so I want to see it happen while he's here to be at the ceremony. Put Lou in the ring, if not this time, maybe next time. But no one more deserving than Lou Lamarillo, in my opinion. Always love Lou. The godfather. The godfather of New Jersey Devils hockey, Lou Lamarillo. Another guy that I believe is a perfect contender for the Ring of Honor, Larry Robinson. Larry Robinson is an absolute legend of the sport. Took over uh, for Robbie Fratorik as head coach in 2000. Was instrumental in the Devils winning that cup in 2000. And a, a little known fact that a lot of people forget or don't know is that Larry Robinson was an assistant coach on both the 1995 and 2003 Stanley Cup champion New Jersey Devils. Larry was on the staff for all three cup championship teams. He was a guy that I threw out as a pipe dream months ago as a possible head coach. You know, he's getting older now and he's enjoying retirement. But I put out a video a while back that if I was Fitzgerald, I would have certainly hit up Larry to see if he was interested. I think he was great with developing players and uh, just a very experienced guy that's been through it all, seen it all. Always love Larry. So Larry Robinson is 100% on my list for sure. And another guy that belongs in the ring, Jacques Lemaire, the man that kind of laid the foundation for it all. Brought the Devils 
to their first Stanley Cup championship in 1995. Came back, actually, in 2009-10, coached for the season, and then Johnny Mack was hired to coach for the 2010-11 season. We didn't get off to a good start. Johnny Mack got fired in December, and Jacques came back again to finish out that 2010-11 season. So Jacques has technically three stints with the New Jersey Devils, but instrumental in bringing us that first cup in 95, laying the foundation kind of to go forward to start the Devils mini dynasty that we had during that time. And Jacques Lemaire definitely belongs in the Ring of Honor. Another guy that belongs in the Ring of Honor, the late Pat Burns. Burnsy got hired in the summer of 02. First season as New Jersey Devils head coach. He brings them all the way. A lot of guys didn't necessarily get along with him. A lot of guys loved him. You know, everyone has a different opinion on him. The fact remains, Pat Burns got it done in his first season as Devils head coach. Brought the Devils to that 2003 Stanley Cup victory and the last cup that this team has won, unfortunately. And it's been a long 21 years. I can't believe it was 21 years ago that I was in Continental Airlines Arena rejoicing as my New Jersey Devils won that beautiful, beautiful cup for the third time. And some more guys that should be in. Mike Doc Emmerich. If you don't know Mike Doc Emmerich, I don't even know how you're watching this video right now. Probably the greatest broadcaster in the history of hockey, if not all of sports. Longtime Devils play-by-play guy for years and years. Doc is the soundtrack to my childhood. He's the soundtrack to so many great, iconic moments in Devils history. No one does it better than Doc. He is an absolute legend of the sport, and he belongs in the Ring of Honor as well, if not a, a banner for him of some sort of... I guess you can't really retire an announcer, so I guess the, the Ring of Honor would be the highest thing you could give him. If there was something higher, I'd give it to him. Doc, nicest guy on the planet, with the team forever, and he belongs in the ring. And how can you say Mike Doc Emmerich without bringing up his longtime partner, your favorite personality and mine, Glenn Chico Resch. Chico played goal for the Devils years ago and found his way back as a broadcaster with the Devils for eternity as well. Another guy that's been around since my childhood. Chico is one of the most colorful guys in the game of hockey. Nicest guy. I've talked to him on plenty of occasions. And he's been with the franchise forever. Another guy that belongs in the ring of honor, Glenn Chico Resch. And it's going to be so interesting to see when they announce this. I'm very anxious. You know, it's about a little under, it's like three and a half months away. When are they going to tell us? Tell us who it is. The next guy that belongs in the ring of honor. Claude Lemieux, two-time cup champion with the Devils in 1995 and 2000, won the Smythe in 1995 as the most valuable player of the playoffs. This guy was clutch. He was nasty. He would hit people. He would give you face washes, score timely goals. Claude Lemieux was Mr. Clutch, huge in that 1995 run, came back in 2000, was one of the lose little tinkerings, and... um. You know, that cup came back in 2000 with Claude on the team again. Love me some Claude Lemieux. He belongs in the ring for sure. And another guy that is deserving, John McLean, Johnny Mack. A lot of people kind of have a sour taste in their mouth from him and the way he left the Devils. But, you know, I'm of the belief let bygones be bygones. That was years ago. Johnny Mack, sixth all-time for the Devils in games played with 934 Second all-time franchise leader in points with 701, and he had the record forever until Patty broke it in 2009. You know, 701 points. I mean, my God, that's a good amount of points. You know, that's that's basically a point-per-game player for nine straight years. I mean, that's not what it was, but I'm just saying, for someone to break that, you'd have to be a point-per-game guy for nine, nine years in a row. Ton of points. He was there as well in 1995 big part of that Stanley Cup championship team and with his longevity with the cup with the points record that stood forever albeit a failed coaching attempt coaching stint with the Devils Johnny Mack belongs in the ring of honor as well Johnny Mack belongs in the ring of honor as well and the list continues the list continues who is my next name on the list the Gomer Scotty Gomez 2000 Calder Trophy winner as Rookie of the Year on the 2000 Stanley Cup champion New Jersey Devils on the 2003 Stanley Cup 
champion New Jersey Devils. Gomer, a two-time champ, Calder Trophy winner. He belongs in the ring for sure. Would love to see Gomer in there. I believe he will be one day. And maybe it'll be this one. I don't think it is. I have a feeling it's not going to be a player, guys. I really do. But Gomer definitely belongs in the ring of honor. The next guy up on the list, Bobby Holik. Another two-time Stanley Cup champion with our beloved New Jersey Devils. A huge piece of the 1995 Cup championship team. One-third of the infamous crash line, along with Randy McKay and Mike Peluso, one of the greatest lines in Devils history. Probably my second. I have to have him at two. The crash line is my second favorite line in Devils history, only to the A-line. The A-line is by far number one line in Devils history. I I'm not even trying to hear any debates against that. I don't think many people would. But Bobby Holik, another two-time Cup champ, a big member of that 95 team, and a third of... The second greatest line in Devils history. Bobby Holik. Love me some Bobby Holik. He belongs in the ring. And how could I bring up Bobby Holik without his fellow crasher, Randy McKay? Same story. Another two-time cup champ with the Devils in 1995 and 2000. He was a big member of that 95 cup drive on that crash line. Love me some Randy. Another great personality in Devils history. And he hoisted the cup twice for us. And the next man. The, new, a new, the newer era of New Jersey Devils hockey, Jay Pandolfo. Jay Pandolfo, one of the most underrated players in Devils history, if not NHL history. This guy was a defensive wizard. He would be shutting down the other team's top lines on many nights. Defensively responsible, did it all, sacrificed offense for the betterment of the team, came into the league as a, a scorer, and he transitioned his game to be a defensive specialist, two-time cup champ in the 2000 and 2003 team. Pando doesn't get enough love, but for the old school fans like myself, a lot of you know what Jay did for this organization. Absolutely the man, and Jay belongs in the ring of honor. And we go to yet another two-time cup champ. The next guy on my list, John Madden. Just like Jay Pandolfo, two-time cup champ, 2000-2003, defensive whiz, had lots of beautiful shorthanded goals, but John Madden got the job done. He was in people's faces, wreaking havoc, shutting down teams' top lines as well. These guys, Pando and Madden, probably the two most underrated devils in history and a big part of both of those championship teams. Love both of those guys. And, and Mad Dog, John Madden, also belongs in the ring. And now we get to yet another two-time cup champ because... That's what, that's what they're playing the games for, guys, is to win the Cup. And this guy also did it twice. Colin White, another two-time Cup champ with the 2000 and 2003 New Jersey Devils. A rough and rugged stay-at-home defenseman. Love me some Colin White. He'd be smashing people, clearing out the crease. If you touch Marty, Whitey would murder you. Rough and tumble as they come. Old-school throwback type of player. Also, in my opinion, doesn't get enough love. Stay-at-home defenseman, never put up flashy stats, but he did his job, did it well. Whitey belongs in the ring of honor. And then we get to yet another, another two-time cup champ, Brian Rafalski, winning the cup with the Devils in both 2000 and 2003. Brian Rafalski was, what a find. What an absolute find by Lou Lamarillo. Rafalski, great puck-moving defenseman, lethal on the power play, had a great shot, great vision, great hockey sense. And I feel like he's another guy that often kind of gets forgotten about. Because these teams were so loaded with, you know, Hall of Famers and big-name guys, I feel like Rafalski is another one of those guys that people don't really credit enough. He was absolutely phenomenal for the Devils in, in both of those cup runs and, and his whole time here. Love Brian Rafalski. He belongs in the ring of honor. The next guy on my list, Jamie Langenbrunner. Jamie Langenbrunner, a 2003 Stanley Cup champion with your New Jersey Devils. Tied for the team lead during that playoff year with Scott Niedermeyer. They both had 18 points, and what a phenomenal run. Jamie Langenbrunner was dominant during the 2003 playoffs through the cup win. Huge part of that win, and if Lou didn't make that trade, which sent Arna and McKay to Dallas for Langenbrunner, we probably, well, Langenbrunner and Neuendijk, we probably would have never won that 2003 cup. It's kind of crazy to think about. And the freezing trade was also huge for that cup team as well. But Jamie Langenbrunner belongs in the ring of honor. 
Eventually went on to captain our beloved New Jersey Devils. Played a ton of games here. Would love to see Jamie in the ring. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I didn't miss anybody. There's probably a couple other guys and some newer guys, but I'm not even getting there. I, in my opinion, it should kind of go in priority order in terms of, like, you know, when your tour of duty with the Devils was. And, you know, I, some people are going to say Zajac and Green. I mean, they're both worthy as well, but they should be far down the list, in my opinion, because we have all these cup champions and multiple cup champions. But I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know who do you think – should be the next inductee into the ring. So throw out all those names. I know you guys are going to be coming with it. I've talked about this topic last season or last year, whenever it was. And who do you think it will be? So it's kind of a twofold question. Who do you want to see? And who do you think it will be? I'm not really sure where they're going to go with this, but for some reason, I don't think it's going to be a player. I don't know why, but there's no shortage of guys. Those are the guys that I just rattled off. I think are the most deserving and the most kind of pressing that should be put in. Um, you know, I suspect, I really do suspect it's not going to be a player, though. For I don't know why I'm getting that inclination, but I am. But throw it out there in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Throw anything out there, Devils Hockey. We will be playing a preseason game. The last one with our NHL guys tonight against the Islanders on Long Island. I'm very anxious to see what Sheldon Keefe is going to call close to an NHL lineup. So hopefully... We see most of our available regulars in the lineup, and hopefully we get this friggin' win because I'm tired of watching losses. And, yes, I understand it's preseason, yada, yada. I'm not hitting the panic button. A lot of people are, and I'm here to say it's not time to panic. Far from. It's preseason. The other night against the Capitals, we only had two NHL defensemen in the lineup. And so, yes, I understand our top two lines played and Markstrom played, and a lot of the haters are like, oh, well, I wasn't on a JV team, blah, blah, blah. I'm a, you can't put stock into these games, guys. Until we see close to an NHL lineup, it sucks that we're losing, but it's preseason and it doesn't matter. But I'll be back soon. Got lots of stuff in the works. Throw it all out there in the comments. I love you all. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Until next time, friends, let's go devil. <laughs>